show your support, like, share and subscribe. So, um, how's it all been for this week in the world of that British Garden? Ah, it's been a lot more uh, successful than the last time you asked that question, as I have actually managed to do a few videos this week, rather than uh, nothing at all. Ah, that's right. Oh, yeah, your I... Bomberman video came on today, didn't it? It well, did, yes. Uh, today of time of recording. Today on day of recording, and yesterday on day of recording was the kind of announcement of the restructure, so that we get solid kind of videos on a daily basis which will kind of give me a kick up the rear end to actually record and edit stuff yeah um there will be another video uh saturday so yesterday as this one goes live mm -hmm. um and then yeah kind of more of the same tuesdays saturdays and then kind of every other thursday sounds going all right. forward yeah so it's uh yeah kind of getting back on track after a few bumps in the road. Yeah. Um, so yeah, which is the, good. I see the job is uh, secured, basically. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that on top of everything else with the house was just a bit like ah. Yeah. But put that to bed. So. Yeah. Kind of At least you've only back. got one problem now. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that problem has kind of become the norm now. So. Yeah. I was al I was always doing bits while that was happening so there's no reason to kind of put that off and I'm not doing any shows so I've got work and this so we're all good yeah there you go no um, no mm. risk of job loss and no mm. uh, shows to focus on so straight yeah. back to YouTube it's all good yeah yeah, yeah that sounds indeed. Right. what about yourself I noticed that uh, you got a few bits out this last week yeah, well, I think that's sort of like a knock-on effect, a domino effect, shall we say, of a, of a week off. Ah, <laughs> right, I, yes, um, of course. Where it, well, that sounds sort of uh, more than it is. It, I had a week off. I didn't spend some of the week recording. Instead, of a Thursday morning for about four hours, I just recorded about four videos mm. and then had the rest of the week off to just kick back, to be honest. Fair play. And it was quite enjoyable. So I've, I've still got stuff to edit, actually. I've got a, a video coming out next week, which I'm sort of excited about how it's going to knock on to a new series of something. Which oh, I'm, okay. Which um, the only clue I can say about that is, which I'm still trying to map out in my head, if that makes sense. Right, okay. All will, will, that all will be... be revealed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but... Um, Fair enough. And what, that will be kind of an ongoing thing, will it? Yeah, but I depending on sort of uh, time allowed and things that will be an ongoing thing for a probably a good year or two actually oh cool not maybe a regular week or every couple of weeks maybe once a month yeah but yeah all will all will be revealed soon cool but yeah so um, yeah should be alright okay. I'm looking forward nice. to that okay sounds good sounds intriguing yeah and of course as we said last time we've still got our uh, next collaboration to do Indeed, and guess what? I still need to get an adapter <laughs> for playing this, recording the uh, footage for the SNES. So it's kind of still entirely my fault. That's why right. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was at um, Comic Con this uh, well the weekend just gone, which is last weekend at time of listening. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just to try and see if I can get Mario Kart 64 retro game bought, so I had it ready. Uh, yeah, right. but it was. Obviously, you can't Mario Kart 64 trying to buy at a Comic Con is just you know <laughs> you need ah, you, yeah far too expensive yeah but I <laughs> it was good just to sort of see it and go yeah oh, I really want that <laughs> cool so uh, yeah I've checked eBay and in the next couple of days I'll get one off of there for about twenty pound it's not too bad actually so no that's I suppose that's fairly yeah. reasonable isn't it really yeah partly for the collaboration but also partly because it's a really good game and I really want it. Fair play. Yeah, I don't know if we've got Double Dash anywhere, have we? Because that's always been a good yep, one. Yep, I've got Double Dash that on the GameCube. Yeah. Yep. I've got Double Dash and the first one on the SNES. Yeah. So, and then um, I think you've got it on the Wii, haven't you? Yeah, I've got it on the Wii and the Switch at the moment. And then if, hopefully, we'll have time for it as well, the N64. Mm -hmm. We'll have to figure out the, cool. the number of parts depending on how well we do, I think. so. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah. 
Lovely stuff. Do you have much more uh, news or topics of conversation? Um, what, in terms of the channel? Yeah. The only other thing I will say at the moment is I have two things that I have started. One that I have started recording that I will kind of carry on recording when I have time. Right. Um, that I plan on releasing completely sort of all together, almost like uh, so it can be binge watched. Yeah. And there's something else which I have started writing, um, but I haven't got round to kind of putting that into practice yet in terms of recording and editing stuff. So outside of the scheduled uh, videos that I'll be doing, there are a couple of other bits and pieces that will make their way to the channel. Maybe not even this side of Christmas, okay. but... They might do, depending on... Uh, basically, I'm not going to give myself too much of pressure in order to put them out, but it's just kind of if I have uh, an extra free day and a few hours to kill, then I can do a bit more recording and kind of get ahead with it. That sounds all right, then. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Lovely. Yeah. Do you uh, want to go first with a topic this time? I can do, seeing as we mentioned yes. uh, Comic-Con. I think um, yeah, indeed. it's only sort of good for me to elaborate on the very small two minute video I did. I just wanted to mm -hmm. do something to let people know what it's like at those sort of places and it's absolutely fantastic to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> something that happens twice a year usually last weekend of May and last weekend of October Right. what I tend to do is Preferably, get because you can get priority tickets and in, and uh, general entry tickets. I think general entry you get into the event. I don't know. I think it's like an hour, hour and a half, or two hours maybe after it actually opens. But the priority right. entry gets straight in, basically. Uh -huh. Straight in to the action. Doors open at nine, at least uh, they did on the day I went. So you get straight in, and you're the first ones in, and it's brilliant. Th so uh, you were in at nine o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, um, we got there at nine. We I usually go on the Friday because that's usually the day that's got the least amount of people, and because it's the first day, it's got the most amount of just stuff. I'm gonna say that makes sense. Not that they sell out by Saturday or Sunday, but it's uh, yeah, everything's set up ready for Friday, so you're one of the first people into the entire event. I think this year they had um, I looked at the numbers. They had 113,000 people go this year, Blimey. which is a lot. And what, it, over the entire weekend was that? Yeah, and if you were there on the Saturday like I did this year, at around 12 o'clock when general and priority entry people were in, you would absolutely believe that because <laughs> you could barely move at points. There was a lot yes. more footage I was trying to get, but I just couldn't because there were too many people. Like, for example, this was the first year that they had... Um, any sort of official Doctor Who stands. Really? Yeah, official ones at least. They always have Doctor oh, Who right. stuff, but this was from the BBC. Like, for example... The... Even though the programme's been back for 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they had the actual TARDIS from the latest series there, which I was... Oh, that is cool. Yeah, which I was trying to get footage of, but as you can understand, that was impossible. <laughs> Yes, I, I'm sure it probably was, yes. Almost as impossible as the impossible girl of Clara Oswald. Uh, <laughs> but no, we won't go down to that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't mention that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it, so it has stuff like that, and it has just general exclusives like the uh, Funko Pops. They usually have a stand there, a Funko stand, mm -hmm. with a hell of a lot of exclusives in there to be bought. A oh, what, that you can't buy even online or anything? Yeah by the looks of it. I didn't recognise mm. any of them from what they were posting on social media, but people did, obviously, because the queue was about 30 or 40 people long. It was a popular place to be. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah there's, but things like that, you get long queues everywhere. Like the Doctor Who, they had an escape room, which was Doctor Who-based, and of course you can mm. imagine that was extremely long queues. Yeah. Do you, you kind of have to pay extra for those sorts of things? I don't or? think so, no. All oh, right, it's once you're in. Yeah, that's it. You've pretty much only got to pay for any items you want to buy from the stores. Yeah, that's pretty much what I got from it. And, of course, the photographs and autographs and things. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, and it was uh, the one thing I was quite not annoyed about because you can't help it, but I was frustrated at was there was um there was an hour long queue to play the new Let's Go games, which in isolation isn't too bad. Mm. I went straight there and I was willing to wait that hour. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to the right of me, literally, was just like the rope separating you, the queue from the game. And I was, I'm going to say, about a yard or two away from one of the first people playing it. And I was, but every screen had um, had a person there, basically had a member of staff with it. And I was just listening and watching because obviously I'm going to be watching the screen. I want to see what it's about. Indeed. Yeah. But um, I was listening to the staff member, and I don't know if it was like this on every screen, but I'm assuming it is. But when they were roaming in the overworld, I'm going to call it, the staff member would be like, hey, right, now let's go try this. And why don't you go talk to this person? And I was sitting there thinking, I don't, oh, if I'm there, I don't want to be told where to go. You know, it's a demo. You're getting a chance to play it. I want to go and experience it myself. Yeah. yeah. Admittedly, when like a battle would start or a wild encounter, they just let you get on with it. But you can't really right. go anywhere when you're doing that anyway. But yeah. um, those things were instigated by the staff member saying, now why didn't you go talk to him, or why didn't you go battle him? And they sort of don't give you a choice, which is a bit annoying. Is that because of the limitations of the demo, though, to give you those kind of encounters, just in case you kind of happen to avoid them all, and then... Yeah, well, this is what I was thinking. I thought the demo itself, because I, si- I saw the title menu, and it literally said demo version that they select. So it, right. that to me, that itself seems like a limitation version of the game so you should be able to just do what you want but Mm. maybe not maybe they're planning to release the demo a week before the game's out and they don't want to give too much away maybe you know too too, too much is it still not is it still not possible to sort of download that um on the switch store then not yet no Uh. but they had the demo for um uh, Alpha Sapphire and Amiga Ruby and they had the demo for Sun and Moon so this is like the next sort of series yeah. so I would hope there's going to be a demo but there's only well as of now there's only 15 days 2 weeks or so left until the game's out and there's no news of a demo yeah. So seems very short notice oh Pokemon loves short notice <laughs> Yeah, but then I suppose you're probably going to be buying it anyway. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you don't need a demo. They don't need to... They, I suppose at a place like Comic-Con, they can kind of hype it up a bit and maybe get you interested in it so that you go off to one of the stores and buy some merch because that's all you can get your hands on at the moment. Yeah. But outside of that, because I, I can't even really remember the last time I saw an advert for it. The only reason I saw the trailer is because you kind of mentioned that it existed and pointed me towards it. Yeah. And it will still sell millions of copies worldwide, and they've not really had to advertise it at all. Yeah, it's very much like a Marmite game at the moment. There's um, people that are saying it looks absolutely awful, and they're killing it off. And uh, oh, wow. but there's also people that are saying those people are silly. Let's just give it a chance. And I'm one of those people. Mm. I'll give it a chance. Mm. But I can see why people are reserved. But yeah, no, that's um. I was going to queue up and do that game, but after about five minutes and listening to that guy, I thought, nah, I'm fine. I'll just leave that there. I'll Um, let myself be excited for another couple of weeks. I can wait a bit longer. (laughs) Yeah, we've waited long enough, I suppose. Yeah, there's more of a Comic-Con to see. Yeah. Which is quite... Yeah, Yeah, of course. It wasn't that long after that. We sort of walked around a a corner, I don't know, maybe half hour later or so, and I saw someone walk past me. And his face sort of triggered in my head. I was like, oh, hang on a minute. And it's a, it was a bloke called Ace Trainer Liam, who is a Pokemon YouTuber. He's probably the one I go to most, if oh, that cool. makes sense. He just walked past, so I was sort of... <laughs> I sort of turned and saw him st- uh, talking to someone at a stall or, or a stand, a gaming stand, this was. So I just sort of thought, well, I'll wait to see if he walks back this way. And, uh, yeah, I gave it a minute or two, and he walked back, and I just sort of said hello and had a... Had a chat, shook his hand, got a picture. Oh, that's cool. That's quite Is good. that the person who you were, yeah, clearly in picture pose with in the video? Yeah, then? that's the one. It was. Oh, cool. It was good. I don't get starstruck or anything. I know he's not. I'm not he's not like you know, <laughs> you know, like a Jody Whittaker or something. He's not that you know. But still, to me, he's quite a good guy, and I don't particularly get starstruck or nervous or anything. I've got quite a monotone voice, and I never sound excited or anything. <laughs> so I was sort of <laughs> saying hello, shook his hand, you know, sort of that great. That's brilliant, and um. I've 
I, I watched him on Twitch once, and I want to watch him more. It's just that I just haven't got round to it yet. He's actually on there now, so I'll go there after this. But um, oh, cool. Yeah, and so I've been on there once. I spoke to him a couple of times on there on a the little chat box they've got. But for some reason, I want, I was hoping he'd recognise my name. So I sort of said, yeah, I'm Poker Pigeon on Twitch. And then I, for some reason, I just said to him, I've only watched you once. I was like, that's, that's, <laughs> why did you say that? <laughs> that's not going to help in any situation. <laughs> and he immediately is like, oh, go yeah, away. No, <laughs> no, he was quite nice about it. That's right. Uh, yeah, but then... Uh, yeah, Tasha, who I was with, was uh, just told him that I did amateur videos as well, which is like, oh, I didn't want to tell him that. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's like going up to Bill Bailey or someone and saying, I do comedy too, because you can imagine that they're yeah. just thinking, oh, yeah, really, wow. <laughs> mm, terrific. <laughs> <laughs> but he seemed all right with it. Maybe I'll give him a tweet and see if he'll uh, watch one of my videos. Who knows? You never know. So presumably he does it uh, for a living then? Yeah. Like that's his... Yeah, he's got... Yeah. yeah. He gets enough income off of Twitch and sponsorships and adverts and stuff. Yeah, if only, yeah, day. If, well, if only, yeah. Yeah, it would be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? It would be One nice. day. <laughs> mm. But, yeah, no, I just generally, I do love a Comic-Con. It's just mm. a great place to be. And it's. I think the main thing for me is that people that go there, there are people that go there that dress up, that you can tell aren't confident in, I'm not going to say the real world, but, you know, like in the... In a non-Comic-Con yeah. world, the kind of people, sort of like myself, I suppose, but a bit more extreme, the kind of people that maybe get bullied or are very socially anxious, don't particularly know too many people in their area, and they just sort of sit in their houses, don't particularly do much and things. But I know what you yeah, mean. And yeah, then they yeah. think there's two days a year where they can wear what the hell they want and go to a yeah. place full of people that are going to love what they're doing. And they're gonna yeah, feel no good. judgment. Yeah, yeah. That's I know what you mean. The f- that's my number one thing about Comic Cons is that any every, oh, it's just it's an opportunity for everyone low on confidence and self esteem to go out and enjoy themselves twice a year, and it's it's wonderful seeing literally. I know it's gonna sound all wishy washy, but it's a uh, wonderful seeing the smiles on people's faces and the actual fun in those in those sort of venues because I've never met once. Like I've never met one bad person or one annoying person at a comic con. Like, you know, you've been in London. You can go to London for thirty seconds. You'll bump into three people that are annoying you already. But you yeah. go to this place where there's one hundred and thirteen thousand people over three days, and not once will you ever think about anyone as oh, you're annoying. It's it's just wonderful. Yeah, because I suppose they're all there just for the the enjoyment and the yeah. the fun. Exactly, of it. and that's yeah. Well, yeah. I want to come in May. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all for that. Already, already uh, kind of run it past Karina as well, yeah. my other half. Um, and I think I may have talked her into it as well. Yeah, it's... Her, her one question was, is there any Sailor Moon oh, stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, loads. <laughs> I thought, this, yeah, I thought they probably People dressing up as Sailor Moon wherever you look. Like, it's quite a popular cosplay, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, from what I remember, I, I don't recognise the other characters. I know what Sailor Moon looks like, so it's... Mm. I'm not going to say everyone does. I'd say, I, I reckon I'll see probably about seven or eight Sailor Moons while I'm there. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Exactly. Yeah, well, um, yeah. But even if people don't like that sort of thing, like my mum went when she was still with us, God rest her, and um, she literally spent no money. She only really is into Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. And then we're on the way home and she said to me, that was one of the best places I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, really? it's like she didn't, and she oh. didn't even buy anything. She was just going there for the experience. So, um, yeah, it's it's oh. brilliant. That speaks yeah. volumes, then, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and on that note, that's my sort of pitch for Comic Con. If anyone hasn't tried it, go and try it. Fully recommend. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, there you go, then. I'll see you there in May. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. What would you? Yeah. Anyway, enough of me. <laughs> I think I've been talking for oh. well over an allotted ten minutes. <sighs> Probably nearer. Oh me. no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so call the time please. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a nice, fun episode. This one, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Have you got Have you well, got a topic to follow that on? <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm going to do is the complete opposite from last time, where I completely brought the mood down and uh, <laughs> made things all a bit miserable and uh, dodgy topics and stuff. And we are going to have a 100% scientific uh, kind of. Basically, you're going to choose between 
two or well there's eight in total but i've paired them all up different uh, match stipulations right okay that are outside the norm of i pin your shoulders to the mat for three seconds and win or i get you in a hold and you tap the mat to basically quit the match okay and what we're going to do is with this as i say 100 percent scientific um system is ask you because you are the genius of all of this um what the best match stipulation is right okay um i I believe i'm right in saying that you've never watched a match um not in uh no not for a while (laughs) not since i was gonna say about 10 or 11 when i had a primary school friend that was uh into this Cool. So this is, as I said, 100% scientific. (laughs) This will be the answer to the ultimate question. This will be, yeah, the best match stipulation that there exists in the entire world as decided by you. Yeah, go for it. (laughs) With all of your knowledge that you have. So the first pairing we have, uh, and obviously I'll explain kind of what the matches are as well, just so that you've got something to base it on other than the name. Yeah. The first one is a last man standing match. Right. Um, and that is basically you lay your opponent out um, for long enough that they are unable to stand up after um, the referee counts to ten. Okay. So you can use weapons, you can slam them into walls and stuff, anything you like. There's basically no rules other than if they can't answer the ten count, then they lose. Okay. Okay. So we've got that. Hit them with a metal chair um, or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, slam them through tables and yeah, whatever you like, basically. No rules other than the 10 count. Um, and that is going up against a street fight or an extreme rules match, which is basically you win it in the same sense as a normal match in terms of pinning someone's shoulders to the mat for um, a count of three. However... Again, in this match, you are allowed to use chairs, tables, sticks, slamming them through walls, anything you like. But you have to win the match still in the middle of the ring in the conventional way of one, two, three count. Okay. So, out of those two, in our first quarterfinals match, which would you say is the better match stipulation? Oh, see, ah. Uh... Is this better as in more entertaining? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, I would say... I would say The Last Man Standing is... Um, that sounds to me like something I would... I would absolutely be interested in. <laughs> okay. I, think the, name, I cool. think the name alone at first sold me, which I thought, oh, this sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, that wins, and that knocks the Street Fight match out of the runnings. And the last man standing match moves on to the next round. Okay. And just as a quick aside, if anyone is interested, there was a last woman standing match at Evolution this past week between Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Watch it. It's brilliant. (laughs) It goes on for about half an hour and it's brilliant. (laughs) Uh, Right. The next two matches. The first one is a gauntlet match. Right, okay. Now, this is... There's usually five people involved in this, and it starts off with two people, and it's a conventional match, um, so pin submission only. You can't use weapons or anything like that. And once somebody wins, a third person comes out, and whoever won that first bit goes straight into a match with this third person, and then they have a match, and then a fourth person and a fifth person come out. So it's it's effectively consecutive matches, one-on-one matches, until that fifth person has come out, and then whoever wins that last match wins the overall gauntlet match. Okay. So obviously if you start at the beginning, you've got a massive disadvantage to those coming out later. Yeah. Because potentially you could start off at the very beginning and have to beat all of the ones that come out after. How is the order decided, or is it just random? Uh, Usually it's random. Um, I mean, there there can be times when, uh, storyline reasons, certain people, especially if you've got uh, authority figures that have kind of an agenda, they might put certain people at a disadvantage and make them go out early. But generally speaking, it's, it's kind of random. Okay, fair enough. 
So there's that. It, oh, uh, are that, the people involved a surprise as well, or are, the, are we pre uh, pre knowledge? Uh, again, it, it it varies depending on kind of the storyline that you're in. Fair enough. Usually, it is announced beforehand who the competitors are, but they don't tell you the order. Fair enough. Generally speaking, and the that is going up against an Iron Man match. Right. Okay. Now this is a time limit match. Um, usually half an hour. There have been hour matches in the past. Um, sometimes they're only sort of fifteen minutes, but they're they're few few and far between. They're usually half an hour or an hour. And this is again two people. Conventional match rules, so you can't use weapons, and it's sort of pinfall and submissions, but. The idea is to win as many times as you can within that time limit. Okay. So if you pin someone to the mat, you get a point. Right, okay. But the match then continues. So you could pin someone to the mat within the first five minutes and go 1-0 up, but then get yourself pinned uh, like 10 times afterwards. Right, okay, fair enough. So obviously then you lose 10-1. Um, so yeah, if you get disqualified, if you get counted out of the ring for 10 seconds or more, you lose a point. Um, yeah, if you get pinned, you lose a point, or you don't lose a point, but the, your opponent gains a point. And it's basically who has the most points at the end of the time limit. Okay. Oh, I quite like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'm going to say Iron Man for that. Okay. Purely because I just love the sound of it, actually. That's it. it I haven't yeah. got an excuse. What, I just like it. <laughs> what, what they often try and do is get it so that there's only one point difference. Um, and then at the end, you've either got somebody in a submission hold looking like they're about to concede another point or you just kind of run out of time on a pinfall or something like that. So it kind of... it. It's very good for drama, that one towards the end. Fair enough. Right, so the Iron Man match has gone through and the Gauntlet match has said goodbye. Our, our next two matches, the first one is a tables match. Okay. And in this match, there is one rule and that's it. You need to uh, set up a table and put your opponent through it. Right, okay. Like, literally smash them through it. So that it breaks into splinters. Okay. So and you can set that up in the ring, out the ring, anywhere in the arena. Technically, you can set it up in the corner so it's kind of at an angle yeah. and push them through it that way. As long as they go through the table and you're the one. Well, I was gonna say as long as you're the one to put them through it. But there have been occasions where people have sort of fallen through the table accidentally themselves and lost. Oh, okay. <laughs> But that is basically the only rule. So, again, you can hit people with chairs, yeah. smash them through walls, whatever you like. But, ultimately, they've got to go through a table in order for you to win. When you say build the table, is it like flat pack? Or is it... <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of... They look almost like a, a wallpaper pasting table. So, apart from the fact that they don't fold in half on the top, you just open the legs out. Okay. And set them up. Fair enough. So it's not taking place in like an Ikea or something. No, 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 <laughs> no. Enough. And they're obviously very kind of specialised uh, tables that uh, kind of... They they break fairly easily, but there have been plenty of occasions where they don't want to play ball. Um, and obviously it uh, it's still going to hurt the person going through it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, you're not smashing them through a coffee table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going up against the ladder match. Okay. Now this is you set up a effectively a step ladder, um, but both sides have got rungs on them, so you can climb up both sides of it. And the purpose of this is to climb to the top of a ladder and retrieve either a title or something. It's usually a title, um, but it can be anything. Um, that is kind of suspended above the ring on a hook. Okay. And the only way to reach it is by climbing up a ladder and retrieving it. And once you've retrieved it, then you win. Right, okay. But again, you there are no other rules. So you can go wherever you like and attack anyone with whatever you like. 
you can have other people come to the ring and help you if you want. Yeah. Okay. You won't get yeah disqualified or anything like that. Okay. Then. I think out of those two, I quite like the sound of the tables match. I think that's. Yep. Yeah. I th- I th- yeah. <laughs> I can see that Thank in you. my head more than the ladders match. Fair enough. And I can see why you paired them together as well. <laughs> well, they also pair together in a match known as a TLC match, okay. um, which is tables, ladders and chairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they usually the rules for that is you either climb the ladder and retrieve something or you get a pinfall. Okay. For some reason, they don't tend to do TLC matches where you put your opponent through a table. Okay, fair enough. They probably could do, but that doesn't tend to happen. <laughs> Right, so we're on to the last two. First one is a cage match. Okay. Now, this uh, there is a cage all the way around the outside of the ring. Okay. And you win either by escaping over the top of the cage. It's usually about uh, 15, 20 foot high, something like that, okay. I think. Roughly. I've not seen one. I'm just trying to kind of picture one in my head. Yeah, maybe... Probably not 20, in fairness. Maybe about 10 to 15 foot high. Fair enough. So you scale that, climb over the top, and then climb down. And once you, once both feet touch the floor, then you've won. Okay. Or there is also, in one of the corners, usually a door. And if you can climb out of the door as well, then that is a way of winning. Okay. Or in some circumstances, again, you can pin your opponent to the mat. Right, okay. But sometimes they remove that element and it's escape only. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so you've got that. Again, obviously, you can slam your opponent into the cage, things like that. Usually, there's not really weapons involved because you can't actually get to outside of the yeah. ring because, obviously, the cage is in the way. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, and that is going up against a Hell in a Cell match. Okay. Now, this is a cage which is bigger so there is space between the edge of the cage and the edge of the ring. So you can get out of the ring, but also still be encircled within the cell. Okay. And um, it's also got a roof on it. Right, okay. Ah. Now, there have been plenty of incidents where somebody will come down to the ring and rip part of the cell off so that people can get outside of the cell. Um, there have also been matches where people have then climbed up to the top of the cell and either been thrown off the top of it or put through the um, cell back down into the ring. Um, but ultimately, the way to win that is just your conventional pin them in the ring. Okay. But obviously, if you are able to make it outside of the cell, you can kind of go anywhere as long as it ends up in the ring yeah. for the pinfall. Okay. I think, out of those two, possibly cages. Uh, cage sounds all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I'm going okay, with that. Okay. No problem. Right. So, in the next round, we have the Last Man Standing match versus the Iron Man Ooh. match. Okay. Oh. You see that? Hmm. <laughs> I, I do like... <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to go last man standing on this one. Yeah. yeah. That jumped out a bit to me. I think that, that was a finalist before I'd heard the rest. Fair enough. Okay. And obviously on the other side of things, we have the cage match and the table match. Yeah, we do. See, I can't... Uh, okay. <laughs> this bit... Okay, I'm going I'm going uh, tables. Yeah. Because then... My uh, my groaning is just because I then don't know who's going to win in the final. <laughs> ah, but it, it's very important that you do because, as I said, this is a very scientific oh, test, yeah. and this this will ultimately decide for everybody in the whole world what the best <laughs> stipulation is. So they will need this knowledge so that they can seek these kind of matches out. Right. So it's going. It, it's last man standing versus tables. Last man standing versus tables. Oh. So yeah, put your opponent out for the ten count, or slam them through a table. Oh, oh dear. See, the slamming through a table just sounds so epic, <laughs> and <laughs> I just like the idea of it. To be honest, because yeah, yeah there's so much tactics involved. I would assume. 
Yeah, there have been. There yeah. have been incidents where kind of uh, tag partners have moved tables out the way just as a move is being yeah. done, so that although you still take the move, you don't go through the table. But equally, on the last man standing side of things, there have been people kind of holding people down yeah. um, so that they can't stand up. Yeah. And obviously, in the last man standing match, you can put your opponent through tables. Yeah. But you can. Yeah, whatever you like, th- really, yeah. in in either match. I think as much as I've said that I love the sound of tables, I'm going to have to go last man standing. Yeah? yeah. That's my that's mm. my choice. Yeah, right. I'm going with it. You, you heard it here first, people. That is officially the best stipulation match that you can get in the history of anything. There you go. Bearing in mind that there are plenty of stipulations that weren't even in the running <laughs> for this. <laughs> maybe we can do a Mark Two in a in a few episodes time. Possibly, possibly. Oh, what? And then maybe do a winners. Oh yeah. Winner versus winner yeah. scenario. Right. Yeah, maybe, maybe. The only reason I picked the ones I did was because I was trying to pick ones that kind of complemented each other in the first yeah. round. I could. I... Like the cell in the cage and the gauntlet and the Iron Man and. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah and they did. Yeah. Yeah. So there yeah. we go. That is officially. The best match. That is scientific proof. <laughs> it is. Fair enough. And yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, do you do you have anything else to add, Mister British guy? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I do. No, I just I just thought I'd uh, kind of just try a light-hearted, uh, yeah, little tournament, if Fair you like. Do you want to? Just because why not? Do you want to sort of recommend any of your upcoming? Videos in particular, or just general? <laughs> um, well, we've got the PlayStation Plus reviews coming back because I've had a month off for those. So when those uh, can be downloaded, I will be playing them and reviewing them later in the month. Fair enough. Um, obviously, we've got our podcast in hopefully a couple of weeks' time again. Indeed, yeah. Um, gameplay wise, this month, obviously, Bomberman is out. I'm looking to do some Soul Calibur bit of GTA London and I might even get my um, PS Move uh, PlayStation Move controllers out oh, or something enough, yeah. yeah just because I haven't used them in a while okay makes sense yeah yeah indeed yeah. Th- what about yourself I think uh, I've got because I recorded it on the same day uh, I've got part four of the Stadium Gym Leader Castle Challenge coming out I've scheduled it on Friday it's already uploaded it's just just waiting for the right time Okay. It's already record- Friday as in the day after we're recording this, so yeah. it's already oh, out? Oh, of course. Or... That came out yesterday. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> no, uh, two days ago. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. Timelines. Um, <laughs> I need that TARDIS back. Um, uh, yeah, but, and then um, up, coming up in the next uh, two to three days, aiming for Tuesday or Wednesday, is a top ten countries for a Pokemon region. I'm quite excited Ooh. for that one. I've filmed the stuff for that. Okay, that sounds uh, intriguing. Yeah, every Pokemon region is based off a country. Like um, the latest game, Sun and Moon Alola, was based off of Hawaii. I know that's not a country. That's a technically, yeah. but that was it was Hawaii. Uh, Kalos in Generation Six X and Y was based off France. Black and mm-hmm. White Unova was based off of um, USA, specifically New York sort of area. So, oh, cool. Yeah, I've um, had a look at the world and I've listed ten places. In my opinion, I think are best for a Pokemon region. Oh, what for like future games? Yeah. Oh, cool. And then, uh, hopefully, by two two ish weeks time, I'll do a hopes for let's go. Maybe not top ten, but I'll just talk and see how many I get and call it a top whatever number I get to. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Still need a skip button. <laughs> ah. Get rid of all the chat. <laughs> yeah, that would be useful. But yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's about enough from me, though. Pretty much. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, right. I th- well, I guess that's sign-off time then. Yeah, lovely. All right then. Cool. Well, until two weeks' time, I shall see you then. See you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye bye.